Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the dark comedy films from 2014, titled Let's Kill Ward's Wife. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie opens with a baptism party of a baby. The baby's mother, Stacy, stands amid the crowd, looking proud of herself as she speaks, uninterrupted by the rest of the guests. We can tell that she lacks respect for her husband, Ward, and openly scolds him for making a little noise in the middle of her speech. As this happens, cold air could be felt around the room immediately, as the guests deeply despise her. Across the room, Ward's friends watch in contempt, they are Tom, Ronnie, and David. One of them, Ronnie, quietly voices that he'd like to smash Stacy's face in the cake. The scene then switches to Tom. Tom lives a simple life with his wife, Gina, and a kid. He is always busy, which has left his wife Gina longing for his love. Before he leaves on that day, Gina suggests that they should screw tonight, but he doesn't seem interested. Another one of Ward's friends, David, is sending his kid off to school, while his ex-wife is calling to make sure he's prepared everything. Based on the trophy laying in his house, we can assume that he's an award-winning actor. Meanwhile, Ward is getting ordered around by his wife to make a sandwich run. After his wife retreats to the house, a police officer named Bruce, who happens to be his neighbor walks up to him to say hi. Tom who works as a reporter, is set to interview a celebrity Robin Peters, who was nominated for two Academy Awards before she fell out of grace and has only starred in smaller roles since. They seem to get along right away, and Robin clearly flirts with Tom, but he thinks of it as a friendly conversation. Meanwhile, David drops his kid off at school, and is greeted by his ex-wife, Amanda. They talk about their shared custody, and she asks for David's favor to take care of the kid a while longer, and David immediately assumes it's because she has a date. Tom goes to his office after the interview, and relays how the interview went to Ward. While they converse, Ward suddenly receives a phone call from his wife, who is upset because Ward is not at home to help her take care of the baby, despite the fact that he's working right now. Tom then suggests that maybe their wives could hang out this Sunday, while him, Ward and the boys play golf together. But Ward shyly replies that he hasn't asked for his wife's permission to go yet, which irritates Tom. When Ward gets home, he goes right ahead and asks for Stacy's permission, but as expected, she says no, because Sunday is Father's Day, and Ward should spend it with their son instead of his friends. Meanwhile, Tom's wife, Gina, tries seducing him but fails, as he reasons that he's tired. We skip to Sunday, the boys have gathered at the golf course to play, all except Ward, who calls them to inform that he can't come, because his wife needs emotional support on Father's Day. Ward tells them that Stacy had a traumatic relationship with her father, and the boys start to shit talk about Ward's wife while they golf. Afterwards, they proceed to talk about how hot Robin Peters is, and Ronnie, who is the only one who's not married, bets that he could sleep with a celebrity. While they take a break, the three bring up about Ward's wife again and how much of a bully she is. David casually suggests that they should probably kill her, which makes Tom and Ronnie laugh. When they start golfing again, they even start asking themselves how they could get away with murder. At some point, Tom receives a text from Ward, and flips him off out of anger for not coming to play golf. At home, Ward is in the bathroom taking a shit when his phone dings and wakes the baby up, causing him to cry. Just then, Stacy bursts into the toilet, starts yelling at him, and throws his phone at him. When the boys are getting home, they're still on the same topic of killing Ward's wife, which makes us wonder if they're actually serious about it. At the same time, Ward goes out to retrieve the mail, and runs into Bruce the police officer again. This time, Bruce suggests that they should play golf together sometime. On the next day at work, Ward complains to Tom that he wished his wife had a hobby. So when Tom gets home, he coaxes his wife Gina, to go hang out with Ward's wife, Stacy. Though reluctant, Tom's wife agrees, and even from the start we could see how grumpy and bitter Stacy is when she arrives. When they sit down to chat, Gina shares about the lack of intimacy in her marriage with Tom, while Stacy coldly complains about Ward wanting to spoon her when she sleeps and how she despises it. Things take turn for the worse when the baby takes a shit in his diaper, but Stacy is too lazy to change it even though the rest of the women could smell it. Meanwhile, David is looking up how to get away with murder at home, and later, he goes to see Ronnie to talk about it. When David brings up the topic, 
Ronnie calls him crazy because he was just joking around the other day. On the next scene, Ward and his wife throw a backyard party, during which we could see Stacy gaslighting Ward by calling him a negligent father in front of his friends, including Bruce the police officer. A few hours into the party, Tom receives a call from Robin Peters, who openly flirts with him, and asks to see him again, which he excitedly says yes to. Unfortunately, Stacy overhears this call, and accuses him of being a cheater, and even goes as far as admits that she might have cheated on Ward already. She even threatens to tell Tom's wife Gina about it, and describes Tom's wife as dumb and naive. This enrages and scares Tom, so he dunks her head in the party cake, and she slips and falls to the ground after stepping on cake frosting. When Stacy's head bleeds on the floor, instead of helping her, Tom strangles her to death. He only gets panicked when she dies and he realizes what he's just done. And so, he hands Ward his car keys and tells him to go get some diapers. When Ward's gone, Tom shows his wife Gina and Ronnie what he's done. While the three try to come up with a solution, Ward returns home, and sees his wife lying dead. Funnily enough, he looks disappointed, but doesn't show an emotional reaction. Their next course of action is to call David, who comes in bringing his ex-wife, Amanda. All of them gather in the living room, and David takes out a series of printed articles on how to get away with murder. Seeing how ready David is perplexes Ward, and gets him to conclude that his friends had planned this. Here Tom admits that they did joke about killing Stacy, but never actually planned it. What happened was technically an accident, and the three apologize to Ward, and Ward just shrugs it off. Now that that's out of the way, David begins suggesting that maybe they should cut her body to pieces, make her face unrecognizable, and then dump the pieces in different places. Another suggestion is to feed her to pigs, but they don't own pigs. After the lengthy discussion, they all revert to the first solution, because it seems to be the most probable, even Ward agrees. The plan is, they're going to reconvene tomorrow to play golf together so that everything appears normal. But in the meantime, they're placing the body in the bathtub, and use bleach to clean Stacy's blood off the kitchen floor. During this process, Tom checks his wife out for the first time in years. After polishing the kitchen clean, David says that he hasn't seen Ward's kid in months, because Stacy was so overprotective towards him. The group of friends then go visit the nursery to see Ward's baby, and upon seeing him, everyone seems to be relieved. They're interrupted by David, who just remembered that they need to drain Stacy's blood, so they revisit the bathroom and David reads the instructions. Here Ward finally learns that Tom strangled her wife, and this seems to disturb him, but he doesn't do anything drastic. The group then proceeds with what they set out to do, they puncture the thigh, and then pump the chest to get the blood flowing. As their clothes are now full of blood spatter, they all are forced to strip down to their underwear, except for Ronnie who apparently goes commando. Suddenly, the doorbell rings, scaring everyone. Ward goes to answer it, and finds his police officer neighbor, Bruce, saying that he left his sunglasses at Ward's backyard. Nervous, Ward suddenly invites him to play golf tomorrow, and to circle back to the backyard himself, reasoning that Stacy wants peace and quiet at night. While Bruce goes to the backyard, David hurriedly shuts the blinds, but Bruce catches a glimpse of him and is now curious. Inside the house, David scolds Ward for inviting a police officer to go golfing with them tomorrow, but realizes it's too late to cancel anything. While the group walks back to their cars, Bruce is quietly watching with bewilderment, seeing that all of them are half-naked. When Tom returns to the house, his wife tells him that she understands why he killed Stacy, and this incident seems to bring them closer together. Meanwhile, David is on a phone call with his ex-wife, and they seem to be on good terms again. He asks her out, and she answers with a maybe. That evening, Ward stays awake, and takes a piss on his wife's dead body. The next morning, Ronnie appears looking unwell, as he's fully realized how messed up the whole situation is, but his friends don't seem to share the sentiment. They all enter the house, and Ward consoles his friends by admitting that he's glad they killed his wife, because he feels happier now. After this conversation, they get their hands dirty by covering themselves in safety suits, and using power tools to chop up the body. Contrastingly, Ronnie is playing with the kids in the living room while the gruesome action takes place. Once they're done, they take a cigarette break, and David warmly shares about how he and his ex-wife might repair their relationship, to which his friends express their support. Afterwards, they pile the chopped up pieces into plastic bags and throw them in each of their cars. The plan is to dump the body in random places, then go golfing, 
and then what Ward must do when he returns home is to call the police to report his wife missing. Interrupting them is Bruce, who offers Ward to ride together to the golf course. Ward awkwardly says yes, but reasons that he must run a couple of errands before he heads to the golf course, so Bruce voices his understanding, and lets the group drive off. But unbeknownst to them, Bruce immediately tails them with his car as soon as they leave. Ronnie arrives in the middle of a deserted field, and grimly digs a hole to dump two plastic bags. Fuck! Meanwhile, David heads to a graveyard, and throws the two plastic bags into an open grave. We now see Tom, who opted to sleep with his wife, instead of looking for a place to dump the body parts immediately. He then receives a call from David, who is calling to check if Tom has Stacy's head, because if he does, he needs to disfigure the face first before dumping it. Luckily, Tom doesn't. The next person David calls is Ronnie, who is crying by his car out of guilt. As Ronnie is unsure whether he has the head or not, David asks him to check, and as it turns out, he does. When David tells him to cut off her face, Ronnie is more than reluctant to do this, which forces David to come and finish the job. We now move to Ward, who dumps the body parts in a public garbage bin. Shortly after he leaves, a suspicious Bruce pulls up with his car. Back to Ronnie, he's in the middle of a meltdown when Tom arrives, as they accidentally pick the same location to dump the body parts. Here Ronnie lashes out at him, saying that the rest of them shouldn't be taking responsibility for the murder that Tom committed. But Tom defends himself by saying that Stacy deserved to die for being a horrible mom, wife, and friend. But then he breaks and admits that it's not the actual reason why he killed Stacy. And before Tom confesses the real reason why, David arrives. David immediately takes a golf club to smash Stacy's face, but Tom stops him because he wants Ronnie to prove he's not going to rat them out to the police, and the only way to do it is by being an accomplice to this murder. Coerced by his friends, Ronnie does what they asked him with contempt, before the three proceed to the golf course. Meanwhile, Ward arrives back at the house to pick Bruce up, right when Bruce pulls up in front of the house. Bruce says that they've got a problem, before bringing out two black plastic bags out of his trunk, and starts to open one of them. Ah. Ah. Look, I get it. Right? But as it turns out, the bags contain nothing but trash from Ward's party the other day, and Bruce scolds him for dumping his trash in another person's bin. Confused but relieved, Ward and Bruce proceed to the golf course. After they arrive, Ward pulls David aside to tell him what just happened, and David proudly confesses that he knew how Bruce might have been suspicious since the night before. He purposely filled Ward's garbage bags with party trash instead of body parts, just in case the officer caught him. To sweeten the plan, Bruce suddenly shouts at Ward, saying that Ward's phone is ringing because Stacy is calling him. Hearing this, David smiles, and tells Ward to tell the cop to answer the phone. As it turns out, David had taken Stacy's phone, and handed it to his ex-wife, Amanda, and now Amanda is at some desert by the highway pretending to be an angry Stacy. After the call, she dumps the phone into the desert, and leaves the scene. When Ward gets home, he does what they initially planned, he called the police and reported his wife missing. Only this time, an oblivious Bruce is present during the interview, and testifies that he was the last person to speak to Stacy via phone call. After this messed up event, Tom and his wife now have a healthy sexual relationship, David goes golfing with Amanda and his daughter, and Ronnie scored a date with Robin Peters, thanks to Tom's help. Before the film ends, we can see that Ward has moved on with his life without a bully to order him around anymore. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Let's Kill Ward's Wife 2014. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.